I've interviewed a half a dozen convicted killers, and um, I, I've always gone into them with some reservations. I haven't sort of wanted to speak to them on, on, in one sense, but for the job, I've written letters to uh, you know these men, they've all been men, uh, in prison to see if they would talk to me, and, and part of me sort of half hoped they would say no because you know I don't want to speak to murderers, generally speaking, but for the job, I want to explore the human condition and to kind of see what drives someone to go down a road that has them commit heinous acts. Each time I've visited a prison to interview someone who was killed, it's a disturbing experience. You're, you're, there's that sense of, you know, a, a bit of fear and, and trepidation and, and sitting across a table at, at arm's length from someone who is, in one case, Carl Hall, who had, you know, bludgeoned uh, uh, a woman and her boyfriend to death with a with a baseball bat, and he's he's right across the table from me, kind of thing. Or James Cop, who, who in, in his way of thinking, took up arms in the war against abortion, and he targeted physicians who provided abortion services because he believed that they were murdering. In some of these cases, uh, I was struck by sort of that the banality of evil, as the expression kind of goes. That you, you s I sat across from these two young men who had who had stomped literally stomped a man to death in a, in a Hamilton bar. And I was struck by the sort of the tone deaf nature of their conversation, how they would talk about it. Not that they were being callous or evil or maniacal, but just that they were sort of matter of fact about it and their, and their life. And you're sort of looking for something profound from them. And you kind of leave it thinking, that's it? That's, that's the killer? That's the one who took this life? You know, and maybe you're expecting some sort of Hannibal Lecter moment or something from the, 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 the monster. And most of the ones I interviewed like, didn't strike me as monsters, just people who had done terrible things and couldn't really account for it. From the start, Ken Murdoch felt different uh, compared to the other killers that I had interviewed. And I mean, it all sort of began with our initial exchange back and forth on, on social media. And I was trying to find out if, in fact, he was Ken Murdoch, uh, the uh, former hitman. And uh, I asked him just one question. I introduced myself as a journalist, and I said, uh, you know, this is probably a long shot, but did you grow up in Hamilton? And he wrote back within the hour and said, uh, long shot, pun intended. And I thought, this is dark. So I wasn't even sure how it would go from there. I wasn't sure if he would grant me an interview, uh, if he would message with me, if he would talk to me at all. To my surprise, we spoke three times on the phone for a total of eight hours. And it was, it was sort of exhausting and uh, illuminating. Telling Ken Murdoch's story initially seemed to me a chance to tell a really interesting true crime story. But in the end, given everything that Murdoch gave me and the conversations we had, it became more uh, than that, at least to me. I mean, I, uh, I, I think it became more of a, this in-depth character study of this unusual life lived. I think many of my stories at their best offer a window into the life of someone who has killed, who has committed the ultimate sin, if you will, and where that person comes from. We all come from somewhere. We all carry with us the baggage of the past, good or bad. As a journalist, as a writer, ideally you're trying to sort of, if just for a moment, feel what they're feeling and kind of uh, picture what they're experiencing so you can write about that with that authority. So you can, you, you know, and that's, that's when the writing is, is, is strongest. But the more you talk to someone and the more you try to understand, the more it kind of stays with you. And it's part of why perhaps I was hesitant to, to even go down that road. But uh, sometimes the road with these crime stories seems to find me and I don't go looking for it and I probably won't go looking the next time either, but uh, maybe there will be one next time too.